Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at FX Hash, which is a way to mint generative tokens, uh, NFTs. So let's have a look. We'll go to the FX Hash site now. And this is the lens of the lost puzzle. Isn't that beautiful? Oh. I guess that probably goes up here, huh? Anyway, we can try solving another one at some point. Uh, um, basically, this will always look like this. So um, that's my puzzle. And you can get your own there, and people have been getting their own. <laughs> so here's what the entire collection looks like. And look, this one's rare because it's dark like that. And so I put it up for sale for 20 Tez. You can get these things for one Tez each. Tez is about $5. It, it, it fluctuates between four and six and stuff. But anyway, um, you can come here and mint and get a pattern. Let's try solving this one. And you see that always looks like that. This is this person's puzzle. Um, and now I'm going to solve it. Watch what happens. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? Can you believe it? The puzzle just starts animating. It's like, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. What? Oh, now it's a slightly different puzzle. It's like, ooh, okay. So each time it will uh, recreate the puzzle again. <laughs> you get the idea? Isn't that beautiful, though? Wow. All right. So uh, that's the idea. And now let's go see how we code this type of thing, shall we? So I'll just... Well, you know what? I kind of wanted to get one. So I'm going to see the generative token here. And I'm going to mint one. Uh, it's now asking for my wallet. Here's my wallet here. And I'm going to confirm that I'm going to buy that uh, collect that thing. So there's my confirmation. It goes through some stuff. Uh, it cost me a Tezo, but I get a Tezo basically 0.975 less the um, the price that, you know, 30 cents or whatever it is to do that minting and stuff like that. But what I'm hoping to, to do is get one that is rare. I want slats to show up. So I, I want to see some slats, and then I'm hoping that more people will mint them because they see that there's some rare different things in there. So mind you, they could sit here and hit the variations as well. So we'll let that think, and meanwhile, we'll pop down into some code. So this is the code for that. Uh, it's pretty easy to make. In the end, it's it's just Zim code. This is some FX hash code. I'll show you in just a sec. But we zip up, we select these things and zip them up. And then we drop the zip up on FX hash. We, we follow some, you know, hey, fill out this field, fill out, fill out this field. Pretty easy to do. And you can um, create that token. And then people can mint from it. And many, many people are. FX Hash is really, really popular right now where people are selling out of their of these generative art things and, and getting like four thousand dollars for a piece of art is like, oh my god, people that we know. It's like wow. So we're all supporting one another. <laughs> you know, I don't know exactly how long it's gonna last, but it's it's all working out pretty well. So exciting times. Anyway, FX Hash gives you this snippet right here. Um, and what it's doing is it's making a hash out of that, a unique hash. Uh, I, I've copied the hash, so there's a hash right there. Um, if I view this in a browser, open in browser, here's what that looks like. Uh, are you ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refresh this, or we could have opened it up in a browser, and it's the same. So it's the same because we've got, I've hard-coded in a hash. Now if I comment that out like so, uh, come back here and I refresh. Now every time we, we're going to get something different. There's that one. Here's one with four by four. Here's a three by three with orange. There's many more. 
So now we're going through and you're seeing some of the variations. And what we've done is we put them in here so that only certain things happen with odds. For instance, most of the time it's a white background. Um, you can see white background. Most of the time it's three, three four, or five uh, squares. So three, four, and five squares are quite common. White background is common. This is a bit more rare because there are more squares. Uh, let's get one that doesn't have a colored background, please, any day. Okay, so there's one or that has a colored background. <laughs> there's one with an orange colored background. Nice, huh? And sometimes the colors inside are the same. And when they're the same, that makes them more rare as well. And then we have slats. So there's ones with slats. We should get that. They're not, slats aren't all that rare. It's like one out of 20, we're going to get slats. So I'm expecting to see a slat any any day now. <laughs> <laughs> There's been about 20 refreshes. There. Okay, so this is a paired slat one. Ooh, that's pretty. I haven't seen a paired one in a while. But there's also slats that are just singular, and there's also vertical slats as well. So can you imagine getting this when everybody else is getting squares, and you go, oh my god, this is so rare. So that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping to pull up one of these slats so more people will um, be enticed. I just launched this last night. Unfortunately, FX hash closes and opens, closes and opens. It's, it's, it's open for 12 hours, closed for 11 at the moment anyway. And that cycles the opening and closing time throughout the um, time zones or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and and I, I launched it just before... Um, well, I'm not. I'm really not sure about it. I think you can still. In the past, I wasn't even able to. I wasn't able to mint. I wasn't able to generate uh, any NFTs um, when it was closed. Now I seem to be able to do that. So I, I always thought that making it just before it closed was silly because then, you know, nobody could make anything. But now it seems that they can, and maybe it's a good idea to make it just before it closes, because you remain on the front page because nobody can mint any any more of them. So anyway, I'm still working out <laughs> when to mint on that system or when to create the token, but uh, whatever. Do you want to see this one scramble? Do you? Do you, do you, do you? There's some um, techniques that you can do to solve these things, like obviously look at the the angle as it approaches the edge there. The slats are pretty easy though, aren't they? You can definitely see which sides, which one's on which side. That one's on the wrong side. That one's on the wrong side. This one should be at the bottom. There we go. Let's see it scramble. Isn't that just so pretty though? The, the the single column one's kind of neat. It just goes... <laughs> anyway, there we go. So as you can see, this one, now that the hash is there, keeps on loading different ones. Okay? But as soon as we put the hash back in, it would load the same one as before. Now, the way it's doing it is this is a seeded random number system. So FX hash gives you an FX rand that you can call. So anytime you want later on, if you go FX Rand, each time you call FX Rand, if you're using the same seed, the very first time you might get eight, the next time you might get 12, then you get 20. Well, if you're using the same seed, the next time you run the application and you're using the FX Rand, you're gonna get eight, 12, and 20 again. Um, so that's really neat. I saw that happening in noise where you could just store one seed and go to the same place in a noise equation and be exactly the same. So you'd get the same mountain range just by storing three numbers kind of thing. It's like, wow, that's amazing. Um, and so what we've done is we've added it to Zim. So now here we are taking the FX hash hash and we're seeding Zim's random number, which is actually seeding JavaScript. So it's a function that seeds uh, the JavaScript random number, uh, which all the Zim random things are based on. Zim rand, shuffle, wiggle, uh, the scrambler, etc. cetera. So uh, if, you have, if you have the random number seeded with the same number, everything happens the same way. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Um, all the Zim pick stuff for dynamic parameters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
So here we are preparing the rareness. I don't know if you if we went through that on the site. So here's FX hash. And if we look at one of these. Did mine come up yet? Did it refresh? No, I can't remember if we. Oh, yeah, here it comes now. So those are the. Yeah, good. Well, it's not slats, but at least, and it's not an unusual number of um, squares, unfortunately. So you see what I mean? People are going to come in and go, well, these are all the same. Um, but at least this is, um, it, it has certain numbers on it. Now, it depends on when, how long this has been going before we get to see, uh, let's see. Yeah, so it has not put in the rarity here. It takes a little while to sort of sign and figure all that stuff out. So let's go to one that does have the rarity. Um, probably one of these do. do. I'm going to view the entire collection and maybe go to one. Let's see how, how mine, that I know this is going to be rare, uh, but let's see how rare it thinks it is. So first of all, every single one has been square. <laughs> it's like, darn, that, that's what I was hoping to break, that one. Um, but only 9%, since there's only been 11 made, only one of them basically has a dark color. So I know that that's rare. Um, unfortunately, these these weren't weren't rare. This one, the difficulty was kind of rare on it. That's so that's pretty good. Um, and anyway, there we go. So really, that's my only rare one. Hence, I'm not <laughs> I'm not rare enough. I'm not totally rare. Except I know that is that hopefully will become rare as these things average out a little bit. You know. Anyway, we'll we'll see. So in terms of the odds, what did we do? We have a, ser a series of colors, or a set of colors, an array of colors. And for the background colors, what I'm going to do is populate an array. If you need sort of like a specific odds, this is one of the easiest ways to do it. So I'm going to loop through these colors and I'm going to push three versions of them on there. Is this my final version of this? Oh yeah, down here it is. I thought I had put rare one out of, okay, I thought I had put percentages on here as well. 75, maybe I only did it up for the sets. Okay, um, so if we're gonna add up to 100 in the end. You can tell because right here, we, we loop through and we create some colors, but right here, we're taking 100 minus however many we already had. So if we're doing um, three each, then that's going to be, uh, is that just 3% for each of this? Yeah, 3% for that, 3% for that, 3% for that. This is for background colors. So three out of 10, three out of 100 times, 3% of the times we'll have a purple background. Only one out of 100 do we have a dark. So that means it's three times more rare than having a color. And then the rest of them are going to be lighter. So to get the final cut, so the final colors is an array where I'm just shuffling. The very background color is going to be shuffling the ray colors. That's what we prepared there. Here, here's ray colors. So we shuffle that and just get the first one. For the rest of them, we're just picking. These are the these are the two colors of the bands. I call them calamaris. <laughs> the bands that are in the front, the patterns that are in the front, they just randomly get these. So we could have made it so that it it did never duplicate it, but I don't mind duplicating. And we even checked to see right here, we even checked to see if they were duplicating. That's, I don't know, that's a rather hard-coded way of doing it. I'm sure there'd probably be an easier way to reduce the array and whatever. Anyway, we're just saying, hey, if the, if the first color is equal to the second color and the first color is equal to the third color, then we have a repeat of two, two of the colors of, re well, it's actually there are two repeats. <laughs> um, it was a, a weird number to get there. It makes more sense though when you get right down to the end. If none of them have repeated, then you get zero repeats. If one of one of the pairs are the same, you get one repeat. And if all of the three, if all three of them are the same, you get two repeats. That's just how it worked. So it's going to be more rare to get that. Does that make sense? And um, what we do with these rarity calculations that we were doing, the format uh, is extremely horizontal if there are 30 rows. So we didn't look at the rows, but let's go to the rows now. 
So we've stored them in pairs like that because that you can't just randomize uh, the rows and the columns individually because you're going to get a bunch of, you know, hey, this one's got three columns and four rows, three and three columns and five rows, and, you know, or whatever. So we prepared them. Most of them here are going to be either three by three, four by four, or five by five. So there's 25 out of 100 that we're looping. We're looping 25 out of 100. So 25 of them are going to be that, 25 of them are going to be that, and 25 of them are going to be that. So that's 75% of them are square. That's why we're seeing mostly square. Um, here, though, uh, we have smaller ones, and we have bigger ones that are also square, and they're 3% each because we're looping three times that. And we, what we did is we fiddled with these numbers and got a, a mix that we liked. And so that's another 12% there. And then we put on these special horizontal ones. Uh, we like them with just uh, one column and 15 rows, 20 rows, and 30 rows. So that's the extreme one right there. And then we loop through the rest of them, however many are left. And we uh, said 80% of the time we're going to be horizontal. So that is uh, either one or two columns and five to 12 rows, so that's horizontal. And the other time, so we've introduced an odds to Zin, by the way, odds 80 will be true 80% of the time. Uh, you could use that with random number, you would just, that's the same as rand, round brackets, greater than 0.8 uh, or less than 0.8. Right. Yeah, less than 0.8. You see what I mean? Like that just takes a little bit of thinking. Okay, rand times point, or rand, greater than 0.2 is 80% of the time. Well, you know, why not just odds 80 is a little bit easier. It's just a wrapper function that works with rand. And because it works with rand, it works with map.random, and therefore it's seeded. Therefore, the odds of this are, are going to be the same. It, or, it, this will have the same answer every single time for a certain seed number. Um, anywho... Over here, uh, we've got the vertical. So 20% vertical is going to put vertical a little bit rare. Here's us figuring out if which one we are, horizontal, or if the two, if the calls and the rows are the same, then it's square. If the calls are bigger than the rows, it's vertical. Otherwise, it's horizontal. And we take these specific values and pass them in as a format to FX hash. So this is how FX hash receives. Um, those those rarity cues, you know, the, the fields or whatever there that you have. So we're doing it based on format. On the ray color only, that's the background color, there's no point really in having which foreground colors are rare. They're all the same odds. It's just, you know, going to muddy the waters, basically. Um, whether it's corrugated or not, and we, we set that right here in the randomized alpha, only 5% are corrugated. So that will help boost rarity. I don't, I don't like the corrugated quite as much. It's, it's kind of cool to see, but I wouldn't want half of them being corrugated, for instance. So uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because may, maybe sometimes the ugly ones or sometimes the odd ones out are the rare ones, and maybe they're you know uglier or, or odd or not, not how you would expect. Uh, Frank Force has the, this thing that draws trees and blossoms on trees, and it's called something like Sublime Branches. <laughs> the ones that are selling for the most money are ones that don't have branches in them. <laughs> I mean, it's just a black background, basically, with you know some dusty mountains in the in the background. But it's called Sublime Branches. It's this picture has got no branches, and it's selling like for four hundred tezos or something like that. So um, anyway, you, you never know what's going to happen. So here's the number of puzzle pieces, calls by rows, the difficulty, although these are quite similar. I mean, maybe it would have been better not to even bother with that, but it's kind of an obvious one, isn't it? And so certain ones may dilute, dilute the rarity of the others, and so you have to be careful. Like, I really liked the rareness of um, the format, you know, of the, of the, of the this one right here is quite rare. Boot, where to go? one out of 30. I like the rareness of the background color right here. That one, one out of 100. But um, 
they're not going to matter as much if you have too many of these things going that are just like, you know, anyway, whatever. Color repeat. Yeah, okay, we worked that one out. All right, so that's a ra the random numbers. Now we pop on into Zim, and Zim is just doing some noise equation stuff. Uh, we're using the generator. So what I've done is broken the generator down into three equations. There's the first equation. Here's the second equation. Uh, I'll call it an equation. It's a, a, sort of an equation. So this is how we're, we're dealing with the noise here to make it uh, join. So this, this technique is what makes the noise join. As it's going around in a circle, it ends up joining at the same place. And, and that's the technique for doing that. I will let you do it. Um, the first one here, the simple one, is just drawing a stroke. Uh, it looks a little more complicated, but that's uh, just finding out if we're if we need to randomize the color or not. So if if we're supposed to randomize the alpha, then it's color dot two alpha, and we randomize it um, between half and one sort of thing. Otherwise, it's just the color. So this isn't really complicated looking normally. That's just a stroke color, and then we're drawing a line from zero zero to the outer radius, and uh, zero in height and we draw that line and then we rotate by the delta that's that calculates the rotation so each time we're just drawing a straight line off to the side but we're rotating the um we're rotating the the what would you call it the trans form of it in a sense we're rotating the whole shape and just drawing horizontally. It, it's a weird way of looking at it. This is what processing does to its relative, its relative animation that we're doing, but we're pushing and popping as well. So basically, it keeps it e easy. We're just drawing a line out to the side, but we're picking up the whole graphic and rotating the whole graphic as we draw the line out to the side. Uh, weird, huh? <laughs> So it's a little bit of getting used to, but people who come from processing probably recognize that, that technique. And here we are using noise that's built into the generator as well. We've got a noise thing built into there. Uh, we're stroking. And this one basically is doing the same thing. That makes the two noise things. So the generator that's calling them are down here. We have three generators and we're stamping. So rather than having them draw, animate draw, which you can do by saying draw. Actually, I haven't tried that. I wonder what it, uh, it would, I don't think it would look very good here. Open in browser. Mm. We might not be able to tell until we see the anime. Yeah, oh, okay, right. <laughs> no wonder we didn't see it. It basically is hiding it with this foil. So it's got this darkness right here until the generator says I'm done. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, okay, great. <laughs> that was a fail, huh? Let's, um, let's see if we can get rid of that. So here's the foil right here. And what would be the best way to get rid of it? Probably just dot alp zero on that would be good enough. Then I don't have to worry about whether it exists in other places. Ooh, okay, so there it is generating. So you see that it's generate it's processing that's kind of like processing and then when it's done it it takes a it, it's basically um, taking those shapes putting them in a holder a container and then chopping up the container and passing it into a scrambler and there it is passed into a scrambler cool huh um, so anyway well back to that in a sec and see it but we how many of those oh yeah all of them I, they're in a loop i was going to say wait a minute i only changed one to a draw stamp will run right away so stamp um just goes almost immediately almost immediately not quite immediately so i found out i thought for a while that I, I, th these graphics are weird because we're picking up the we're using matrices to pick up the graphics and rotate them, but keeping the shape code the same, basically. And that pulls it out of regular X and Y, and it's weird. And for a while, I thought I couldn't cache them, which meant I couldn't um, chop them and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, man, it's not going to work. Why can't I do it with the generator? 
And then um, I realized it was just because the generator takes 0 0.05 seconds or something like that to actually process it uh, and to generate it. And so I was trying to cache it before it was actually drawn on there. So you, you should use, if you want to access the images after, we've got a complete function. Um, another way of doing it, which is what I, when I realized or how I realized, I just went time out like 0.1 seconds, uh, then start to use the, the image, and it worked. And it was like, oh, thank gosh. Um, thank gosh. <laughs> just in case you're religious out there. Uh, anyway. Um, so I thought anytime you're coding, your mind often goes to the worst case scenario. It's like, oh no, it's all that hard stuff from before that's gonna that's broken it when it really was just a time issue. Uh, that's almost called a race race condition, uh, where something is happening before something else needs is done. You know, is ready, and sometimes there are like just very small seconds, like 0.1. Actually, I think I set this to 0 0.05 seconds. And it worked, you know, <laughs> it's like, really, are you serious? The problem was, is I was trying to make the puzzle. I was trying to like uh, chop up the puzzle before it had finished drawing by that much. So the complete function or the complete event, sorry, will be called for that. It, it's a complete event that gets called even if you're um, stamping, okay? Uh, the complete event is more useful or, <laughs> in theory, was, was put in there when we're drawing, where it's, it's taking a while to draw, and then it says, hey, I'm complete. You know, you get a complete event. But you also should use it if you're stamping. Okay. All right. So we're sort of jumping around, but there's our generators. Uh, the, these are the functions, functions at I. We're looping three times, so first time it's going to call that function. And when it does, it this function receives the count, like what count we're on, a maximum number, if, if there is one, and which generator uh, called it. So we're able to use the generator to um, activate things there. Okay, and also use the count. The count shows up throughout here, uh, right there, in getting the angle, for instance. Um, that might be it. The curves, this will be how curvy it is, and we decided to make the curve slightly differently. Basically, the third curve is less curvy. The second curve is fairly curvy or in the middle, and we set those curves up somewhere. Right there. We ended up, we could have done rarity based on those curves, but they're actually not that different really. And so it, it, it ended up not being worth it. I did put it up here initially thinking that we were going to include it in here, but in the end, we just let it slide by. So that's us. Uh, the outside is one. Oh, the outside doesn't even get used. I should probably have set that to null or something like that because note that the equation for the outside one doesn't even have anything to do with the curves in, in here it's only these ones which are generating the noise use the curves so there's curves at one curves at two <laughs> this, this one doesn't do curves i can just see i i know from looking at other people's code on occasion i don't often look at other people's code but you know once a month i might say oh that's kind of neat how'd they do that and i go in and i look and <laughs> if, if i saw something like this i'd be trying to figure out where did they use the one where is it where how what is one does that mean it's not going to be curved where is it straight <laughs> you know anyway it's not being used at all um and some common the stroke width and the segments are all the same because they're just sort of drawing on top of that we're then taking those generators and assigning them g1 g2 g3 because we do different things with them the background we we animate uh down to a little bit of gray the other ones we remove or, or set the alphas right down here we're adding color burns to the the last two but not this one so now we're starting to work with the individual uh, ones so when we're complete we make the puzzle uh we've got a, a we've got a holder here we've got this backing 
that's the same size as the holder. And note the holder is less than the stage size. So that's what's giving us the squareness of the situation. So this is the holder right here. And in behind, you see how there's no slats. You see the slats here? No, uh, stop it. No slats. I, I'm pointing with my other finger. <laughs> anyway, uh, in behind there is gray. That gray in behind there is the background. Indeed, look, this is background transparent. So the gray that you're seeing here as well is also this backing rectangle. And it's sitting in the holder. And it's the holder that we're eventually going to, we put, we put the, the shapes into the holder and then chop it up. That's the, the idea behind it. Where are we here? The foil is just used once. It's a dark rectangle that just goes on top of everything. And then we fade it out. So when we're ready to go, we take the foil. Why did we put it up on top? Do we need to put the foil on top? Maybe, I can't remember. When we make the puzzle, we add the puzzle and then we put the foil on top of the puzzle. Okay, so we make the puzzle, we put the foil on top of the puzzle and then we're animating its alpha to zero. And when that's done, we get rid of the foil and we call FX preview. So, we're, so we've just animated out the foil. That was the dark stuff on top. That should re reveal the puzzle underneath. And we wait just a little bit there 0.1 seconds, and then we call that. What that does is takes takes a snapshot of the canvas that is used in the screenshots. So anytime you're ready to have a screenshot taken, this is one technique, you can do that. You can also, when you're submitting your, your uh, FX hash, you can also just say, um, wait 10 seconds and take the screenshot, <laughs> whatever. But that, I don't know, that might be dangerous, who knows? Um, maybe people leave the page before then, I'm not sure. I did notice on my first one, um, hash, Dr. Abstract Creations. On this one right here, the Meta Mystery, which has been purchased uh, 25 times, times it looks like so here are the screenshots for that and then take a look when I go to view entire it's like what that's uh, and there's another one on page two here I think as well like these two it's like why are those blank and you go to them and they work there they are but it looks like the screenshot got uh, cut off on it, uh, go to this one and it works. So I did that as soon as the stage was ready, like in, in the ready event, and I put everything on the stage, stage to update, take a screenshot. And it's just like, darn. Is anybody selling any of these? How can you tell? That's the collection. One, to two, C generative token. open marketplace <laughs> okay somebody's got one there oh right here they are okay five tes and two tes um, so they would be hoping based on this rarity that somebody will come along and buy the buy blades i'm not going to buy the buy blades i'm not going to buy this one that's the most common character in the whole <laughs> mystery so you're out of you're out of luck nanda roots uh, anyway hi there if you're watching this <laughs> Um, anyway, what were we saying? Oh, so be careful with your screenshot, I think. And that, that was my, all right, yeah, I don't trust it since the last time. We'll wait a little bit longer. I might have even waited a bit longer. I'm just a bit worried if they start doing the puzzle. Although you see what we've done is we've turned the enabled on true. We've waited to make sure that we wait until the screenshot has been taken. I don't want a screenshot taken when they're somebody's half dragging it. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. So when we make our puzzle, um, we've enabled false the very first time. This is the first time we're making our puzzle. We set enabled to false so they can't even use the puzzle until uh, it's all animated in, the foil's all animated in, we've taken the screenshot, and then go ahead and do that. The second time, or any other time that we call the scrambler, 
we don't bother doing that. But we do. We had to do some other things. For instance, we had to uh, don't scramble it because the scrambler, as soon as you make a scrambler, is going to scramble. But you can say don't scramble. And then what we're doing is we're animating back the the rays. This was this took quite a lot. Um, we were really proud of this art piece, and so we took extra care on how it all operated. And yet it, it seems very seamless, but this was like two or three hours of organizing which came first. What, you know what's going to animate when. And uh, it's really tricky. Um, if you if you notice here, for instance, there's a lens of a lost. Let's refresh this. So it all animates in. Uh, will I get a simple one? Let me get a simple one. It's almost simple. Uh, hey, look at this one. A two by two. Have you seen this one yet? So watch carefully what happens around the edge as we solve this if we can solve it. You ready? The edge fades up, then this starts animating, and watch carefully as it um, gets a puzzle. It's going to stop animating soon. There's the stop. The edges fade out, the square comes in, with, and the puzzle starts shuffling within the square. If we didn't do that, we s seem to see little gaps and stuff. So that took a lot of organizing to see, you know, to get the levels and places right. Also, these, like if this goes off the edge, um, we need to animate the, the image, or we need to animate those patterns out and in. That was one flash that we realized we were getting. What would happen is as soon as we solved it, we'd see this flash of color right here. And we'd go, where'd that flash of color go? Or as soon as this um, started to fade out, we'd see something go away, like a flash disappear. And we're going, where did that come from? So we ran with that for a while and then realized there was a little glitch somewhere and we didn't know what it was. In the end, it was because we needed to fade out anything that's outside of the box. Um, we could have kind of cut it and left it there, but we didn't. Um, instead, we faded in and fade out. So uh, there we go, right? We we saw it fade out from that edge. Let's watch it fade in. You ready? See how that fades in there? Before it was just popping in immediately, and we're going ah. Anyway, that kind of layer sort of structure, uh, being able to handle that was a little bit tricky. And in the end, instead of removing and adding, we were started using the alpha. So we're just fading alphas in and out with the uptime and the downtime um, to handle that. So this is what happens when the puzzle's complete. We fade out the images rather than just remove them. We had to just remove them. And then we're animating something else in. Which one's this? Th these are the sticks. So we're animating the sticks right up to an alpha of one. And when we're done, we uh, get rid of the puzzle. We get rid of the rectangle backing and we activate the ticker, and the ticker is restamping the two images on top. But when we did that, it just sort of immediately jumped into restamping. Here, I can show you. So let's just restamp. Well, what would I have to set my factor to one, I guess? Factor. I had no factor here, but um, I could delete it there, but I'm just going to set it to one. Same thing. All right, so that was what we had normally, where you're just increasing by a time difference. That time difference will give you the speed, basically. So S stands for the speed. And that's set up above. Okay, and we're restamping at that speed in a ticker. Let's see what this looks like now. I think it's this one right here. This is, yeah, okay. So we refresh, that's too hard to solve. Ooh, cool, a double slat. Could have solved that one, maybe. Should we solve this one? <laughs> Aren't they beautiful though? So I'm looking for one of those. Oh, this one's good. Look, it's a single slat, not very many of them either. There, we solved it. Okay, I don't know, I forgot to point out what we were looking at. It just, it just starts animating right away. Let's try it again. We get to see it shuffle to whoosh 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 cool huh 
Okay. You ready? I think this is going to solve it. Watch what happens. It's just going to boom. And it just sort of like races away and starts animating. Well, again, taking extra care, um, instead of racing right away, we want to ease in. So I was scratching my head. I was actually working on this with a co-op student. <laughs> and it was sort of like scratching my head. I had to come up with a solution right there live. And I'm going, okay. So what I did was set this increase factor right there. Bring this back in. Don't have a factor of one. So the factor is increasing by that each time. So we've got a factor and we're multiplying by the factor. So this is going to take the speed and it's going to be only that big to start. And we keep multiplying it by the factor, but the factor itself is increasing by this amount every time the ticker goes, which is quite a lot. Once the factor reaches one, that, that means we've reached full speed, we'll set the increase to zero so it doesn't even bother doing that anymore and the factor of one. Um, there might be a better way to do it, but that's not the end of the world. And let's see what the what happens when we do that. Fortunately, we can't use that same one. That was nice and easy to do, wasn't it? A little bit harder. Uh, this one's good enough, huh? I think we can do one of these. A three by three is not bad because you basically got two corners and then two flat pieces. Okay, ready? Oh, it's not, not, not quite. Okay, ready? Watch how it speeds up as it comes in. Slow. And then it comes up to speed. We made a mistake in what we were testing, and it just kept getting faster and faster and faster. It was actually pretty cool. You want to see what it looks like faster and faster and faster? I do. Um, so we don't put a limit of one on here. And I think then it's just the factor is just going to keep on increasing. We could probably increase faster by increasing this to 0.2. Yeah, okay. Sounds good, huh? <laughs> and we get to refresh through a bunch of different ones, which is always pleasant as well. Oh, there's a yellow one. Many, many, many. Another yellowy one. I could solve that. That looked pretty. Oh, my God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This must be the 30 one. This is the rarest in terms of the slats. Oh, look at that, huh? Wow. Do you want to solve it or, or not? Okay, that's too wide, so there must be... It's actually not that hard to solve um, because of mostly of like the edges are you know a bit easier. Where's the other top ones? There it is right there. Okay. Nope, that was in the right place. But this one goes up above it. This one down here. Okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you see, uh, totally solvable. Isn't that beautiful? Aren't you lucky we got to see this? Wow. Anyway, uh, we're seeing it speed up. I just want to get, well, I may as well do it with a two, or like a three by three, because two by two is fairly rare. And that one goes over here, and this one down here, and that one over there, and that one there, and this one over here. Ready? So now it'll speed up. <laughs> Keep getting faster and faster and faster. Whoa! It's pretty cool, too, come to think of it. <laughs> just snap a puzzle. You know, maybe I should have done that. The the ultra fast. Do you like that? I like it. I should have done that. Ah, oh, darn. It's nice sometimes to have speed because then people think, oh, you know, this system's really fast. I think it's a little too hectic to me for me, but <laughs> onward to puzzle. Snap. Fantastic. All right, we're we're uh, we're almost done here. Mm, better undo this. How far do we undo? Factory. I think that's good. Factory. Um, after the certain amount of time, after animate time, we remove the ticker and make the puzzle again. That's what that does. And that's the end of that. 
case, huh? So there you go. That's the Zim code to make that noise dynamic and uh, also handle the FX hash stuff. So you can grab this thing from FX hash. It tells you to grab that. <laughs> I put in a little note to them. Uh, you've got do not edit the following code. I think you want the previous code. Uh, I'm going to edit my following code. <laughs> So I'm putting a, a message to their support system. FX Hash has a Discord that's uh, quite popular and active. So um, look up FX Hash on Discord. And that has been, hasn't it? It's been a what's a bubbling at Zim. You know who I am. I'm Dr. Abstract. It's been a pleasure to talk with you. Hopefully you can come in to uh, join us. We'll see you then. Ciao.